sweet lady. Well, during World War II, the Polish resistance movement was the largest underground opposition in all of Nazi-occupied Europe. Andrew Urbanovich was just 16 when he joined the movement. Only 10% of his unit survived the Warsaw Uprising, in which almost 200,000 people died during April, April and May 1943. At 17, Andrew was taken out of Poland as a prisoner of war. He spent time in numerous prison camps. He even faced a firing squad. But he is here today to show and tell God's grace in his life, which includes his daughter, Tina Michelle Vidalik. This is a story that you two have told all over Poland. Yes, actually we went to Poland for the first time in 2010 and my dad took my daughter and I, that's three generations, and he showed us all the sites and we sh he shared his stories. And then in 2014, we both, all three had a heart to go back to Poland and go on a missions trip to teach uh, English as a second language and share our stories also uh, through concerts. So I sang and my dad shared his testimony and my daughter was interviewed as well. So it was, <laughs> we really have a heart for that. And I'm, he actually hopes to go next, uh, this year. But you're <laughs> waiting for something, Andrew. What are you waiting for? You want to be 90, don't you? <laughs> you want to be 90 when you go back to yeah, Poland. There'll be, there'll be some uh, achievement this year. I'll be 90 years old. I'll be 60 years in Canada. I'll be 25 years born again Christian. Oh, this is such a story. We, we have to give the capsule. But interestingly, I am holding Tina. You are a wonderful singer-songwriter. You're singing many of your own songs as you go back to your dad's homeland. Mm -hmm. and. This is the story we're stealing just some highlights uh, from. And, you know, look at that handsome young man. Uh, <laughs> a, a tragic part of history, but also a very heroic one. Uh, I'm just going to back up a little bit. You were just three when your parents divorced, Andrew. Yes. And you would go to a Roman Catholic residential school. For t uh, six years of my life, from the age of 10, to the age of 16, I was in a residential school. That meant I was away from home, away from my family, and I could only see them occasionally. And your family, your father, well, tell us what happened to your father. Well, in, uh, when I was 12 years old, the war started. And when I was 13, unknown to me, my father was killed in Russia, he was buried in mass graves in Katyn. Now at the age of 16, my mother died. So what happened is at that age, age 16, I was left without any means of support. You were an orphan. And I was an orphan and I prayed to God, help. Hmm. I, uh, I should mention that up to the age of 10, I didn't know God. But from the age of 10 to 16, I, I learned about God and I fell in love with God the Father who was replacing a father I never had. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was what gave me strength for years to come. Mm -hmm. And you felt that God led you at the tender age of 16 to join the resistance. So the first uh, conviction that God gave me is to join the resistance. And that was followed with uh, my call to go to Warsaw Uprising. Then I was, uh, uh, I found strength in God through all the fighting, all the times I was almost killed. Yeah, like standing in front of a firing squad. Well, that was later in the... Uh, after you were captured. After I was captured, I was... Um, the unit I was with, they did something. Uh, they, uh, they refused a direct order. And three of us were picked up and put in, a in front of a firing squad. I was one of them. We got shot at and I was looking that I had felt no hurting, I felt no blood. Then I realized it was a scare tactic. They mm. shot at us with blank bullets, mm. but that scared me. Just another time <laughs> that you cried out to God and another time 
you would count 15 times through yeah. these years, many years, that God spared your life. Yeah, so uh, during the Warsaw Uprising at one occasion, uh, I was put inside of a guard and uh, the, the building was attacked by airplanes and collapsed on me. And somehow I managed to get out. And I didn't even read that one. <laughs> um, I do want to say this for our Polish friends watching. This is just such an incredible chapter of history. Uh, Warsaw fell after 63 days of courageous fighting. The police home guard sent one last radio message from Warsaw. A nation of such courage is immortal. <laughs> Tremendous. Um, we have to go to a bridge because uh, Tina wouldn't be here if you hadn't had the courage to cross a bridge. Tina, why don't you right. start that story? Well, my dad prayed to God, as he mentioned, and he said God told him to go and fight in the Warsaw Uprising. And he ha got a direct order to cross this bridge. You better say the name of it. Poljatovsky Bridge. Named po after a prince, right? Yeah. Mm. And he, he crossed the bridge, he obeyed. And actually, it was quite a feat to cross it. The bridge had lineups, and in the last 30 minutes that that bridge was open, he got through. After that, it was permanently closed and then bombed. So it's quite a story. And then he got over to Warsaw and fought. Now, back in 2010, I remember my dad, as he told this story, he pointed to that bridge in the distance and he said, Tina, if I didn't cross that bridge, you would never have been born. Because, and, yes. well, first of all, that became communist. Yes. And on the other side of the bridge was your wife-to-be, the mother of Tina. That's right. yeah. Just on, connecting the dots <laughs> for everybody here. On the other side of the bridge was an unknown. I was going somewhere I didn't know where. And it turned out to be a turning point, point in my life. You emphasized that you had no fear of death. No fear. Now, Tina, that's not your story. Not we just have a few minutes to, to connect how mm -hmm. God used your fear of death well, to rescue this guy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, actually, I was raised in a home that didn't believe in God. My dad was an atheist. He stepped away from God. He became an atheist for 40 years. Incredible. And Incredible. I, yeah. After, After all, that, all those rescues, Andrew, but, but it's all right. <laughs> that's fine. And God never failed you, right? That's right. And after 40, uh, during those 40 years, I was born and my sister too. And we didn't know about God. And then um, they told us these stories and I was fearful. My mom came close to death. He came close to death 15 times. I'm hearing these stories going, oh my goodness. And it really struck a deep chord in me. And I had a deep fear of dying. I didn't know what would happen. And then I met a girlfriend in um, grade 10 and she was a music class and she had this joy and peace about her which was different than the prior year. And I said, why the change? What's happened? And she Over said- Over a summer. Yeah. And she said, you know what? I became a Christian and Jesus changed me. I didn't know who Jesus was. So I started to go to church, read the Bible. I, I investigated Christianity and other religions. And then at the end of the year, I came to a conclusion. I said, you know what? Everybody believes in something. Mm -hmm. And I put my own trust in my own philosophy in life and I could be wrong. But here, Christianity is based on the Bible and it's been tested and time proven and it's reliable. And so I knew it up here, it didn't change me until I had a nightmare about my dad. I think you actually had three nightmares in one night. Exactly. About your father dying. Exactly. And your concern was, where is he gonna go? Yep. And so at the end of that nightmare, I realized something. I was yelling to him in that nightmare, Dad, Dad, believe in Jesus, you'll go to heaven. And I woke up and I realized that, you know what, Tina, you have not made that decision yourself. Hmm. And so I decided that morning that I would put my trust in Jesus and hmm. follow him. And then I started to change. I knew I had security of heaven. I was going to heaven for eternal life. You also de dealt with, what do you call it? The worry gene? Yes. Uh, and God really changed you in that area of worry. Definitely. And dad saw the change. Yes. But I've got to fill in the blanks here quickly. Um, you confess, Andrew, that the reason you resisted fully surrendering to the God who had rescued you time and again, you were afraid 
that he was going to send you somewhere on a mission and you'd have to leave your children. You came from a broken home. You didn't want to leave your family. That's correct. That's correct. And when I found out that Tina changed, I wanted it for myself. At 60? At 60. So I st started reading the Bible and I remembered the God of my youth. Hmm. The, whom you loved and trusted. Who I loved and trusted, who, whom I lost in my life. And so I came back to Christ and I, uh, for the last 25 years, I've been doing all I can to show me him my gratitude. It's so beautiful. And guess what? He has sent you on mission strips and you love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, he doesn't make mistakes, right? Well, I'll be 90 and I'll be going now and I'll go as many years as God allows. I just love this. We need to pray God keeps you dangerous for him. <laughs> and you're going to want to read the story and, and you have it in Polish as well. I've got some That's people correct. that need to yeah. plug into that. And we go to your website, Tina. That's right, tinamichelle.com. That's Michelle with an, one L. So tinamichelle.com. This is absolutely delightful. And when I watch American Heroes Channel or the History Channel and I see some of these horrible chapters of history, I'm going to remember the God story that you've shared. Mm. Thank you, Thank Andrew. You. Yeah. Mm. I hope you have a wonderful time in Poland this summer. <laughs> Thank you. And happy 90th in advance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the scripture in my heart is, the goodness of God leads us to repentance. I wonder if like Andrew, you need to reflect on God's blessings in your life and get right with him. It's just as simple as Tina illustrated. Just cry out to him. Jesus loves you to distraction right now. And hey, we'll help you. Call our prayer line and just get that eternity issue settled and maybe get the help you need right now with something like worry.